With higher interest rates impacting variable rate debt, more people are feeling the financial squeeze. And while mortgages make up the majority of variable rate debt, financial planner Jackie Porter says high inflation is pushing more of us to use credit cards just to get by. The Canadian economy is crumbling. The once stable foundation of financial security is on its way to the dark abyss of economic despair. Citizens are drowning in a sea of unpaid bills, getting trapped in a spiraling vortex of debt, and mounting credit card interest rates. It's a nightmare scenario and the consequences are dire. As credit card debts pile up and interest rates soar, most Canadians find themselves ensnared in a topsy-turvy cycle of financial misery struggling to break free from the clutches of indebtedness and looming bankruptcy. Let's put this in context. For every dollar an average Canadian household spends, they would owe $1.85. According to TransUnion, Canadians' average credit card balance surged to $4,265 in the third quarter of 2023, marking a concerning upward trend in credit card debt. This figure represents an increase from $4,185 in the second quarter and $3,900 in the first quarter of the same year. Shockingly, it's nearly double the average Canadian credit card debt recorded in the third quarter of 2022, which stood at $2,447. As of the second quarter of 2023, the country recorded a 9% increase in credit balance from past years, owing to more fragments of the population gravitating towards the use of credit cards. The Canadian consumer delinquency has also risen to $2.4 trillion, with an average debt load of approximately $21,000 $1,131, excluding mortgages, which means not only is debt increasing, but late payment fees and interest fees are increasing too, making it harder for Canadians to pay up ever-growing debts. The questions remain. What are the underlying factors contributing to this alarming trend of rising credit card debt and financial oddity in Canada? And what dark secrets lie beneath the surface of the nation's economic facade? In this video, we will unravel the several elements that have led to the downfall of Canada Canada's once prosperous economy and the alarming rise in credit card debt. The unspoken truth is this. Canada's financial woes run deep. It is rooted in a myriad of systemic issues that have plagued the nation for years. From stagnant wage growth to exorbitant living costs, Canadians face an uphill battle against an unforgiving economic landscape. As the cost of living is ballooning in tandem with an unusual inflation rate, credit card spending is reaching historically high levels, and delinquencies are on the rise, especially in bustling provinces like Ontario and British Columbia. Canada's overall debt picture remains bleak as about a quarter of Canadians can only make their minimum credit card payments, and 22% are sinking further into credit debt. As of the fourth quarter of 2023, there is a recorded collective sum of $113.4 billion accrued on just credit cards. Debt is forcing more Canadians to work past retirement age, as more than half of Canadians past 60 are still working out of financial necessity. In May 2023, Canada claimed the unbelievable title of the G7's most debt burdened nation, with the lion's share attributed to home ownership costs. A staggering 75% of household debt is entangled with mortgages. Mortgage holders are starting to miss payments, particularly first-time home buyers and those who renewed their mortgages during the peak interest rate periods over the last 12 months. With an estimated 2 million Canadians gearing up to renew their mortgages, a growing number are likely to feel the pinch. Consumers are being cautioned to brace themselves for potential payment shocks, heightening concerns about the economic impact on households across the country. The die is cast. The once proud maple leaf is wilting and time is running out. At the core of this catastrophic downturn lies a perfect storm of economic mismanagement easy access to credit. Canada's addiction to debt has reached epidemic proportions, with citizens drowning under the weight of sky-high credit card balances and mounting loans. Easy access to credit, coupled with a culture of reckless spending and instant gratification, has transformed Canadians into unwitting slaves to the almighty dollar. However, individual consumers cannot beat the blame alone for this nationwide predicament. The nation's financial institutions, driven by greed and avarice, have played a pivotal role in perpetuating this cycle 
cycle of credit card debt in despair. Despite the astronomical rise amassed by credit card users, most Canadian corporations, establishments, and even some politicians have actively encouraged the proliferation of credit card signups and usage through aggressive marketing campaigns, thereby preying on inept consumers. Just listen to Justin Trudeau as he encourages Canadians to use their credit cards to invest in themselves. You use your credit card to go back to school? Or if you use your credit card, uh, you, you go into debt to uh, build an expansion on your house uh, that you're then going to be able to uh, sell your house for more. If you're making investments that are going to return, that is how you grow a strong economy. Although some may use debt to grow their wealth, many Canadians have succumbed to the allure of instant gratification without considering the long-term consequences of such commitments. By targeting vulnerable consumers and enticing them with irresistible offers of convenience and rewards, most Canadian institutions are ensnaring unsuspecting Canadians into a web of inevitable financial entanglement. This ease of access to credit and the convenience of contactless payments has created a perfect storm of consumer debt, with many Canadians falling prey to the pitfalls of overspending and financial mismanagement. Canadians are indeed facing a worrying financial picture. The precipitous rise in credit card debt in Canada can also be significantly attributed to the aggressive predatory tactics employed by credit card companies, particularly their relentless pursuit to increase credit limits for cardholders. These companies, driven by profit motives, often lure consumers into a cycle of debt by extending generous credit limits beyond Beyond what individuals can responsibly manage. According to the Bank of Canada, the average Canadian household now owes over $4,000 in credit card debt, which continues to climb exponentially yearly. This substantial increase in credit limits may seem innocuous at first glance, but it is having more than a cataclysmic impact on Canadians' financial well-being. Naturally, with higher credit limits, individuals are tempted to spend beyond their means, leading to a ballooning of credit card debt. These seemingly generous limits by lenders have encouraged millions of credit card-holding Canadians to resort to impulsive spending behavior, as consumers feel emboldened to make purchases they otherwise couldn't afford. Beneath the surface is a chilling reality reality that no financial institution in the country is willing to confront head-on, the pervasive grip of exorbitant interest rates. The Canadian government's response to the debt crisis has been woefully inadequate. Trudeau's government deserves all the blame for the systemic failures and misguided policies that have laid waste to the nation's economic foundations. While measures such as interest rate hikes and tighter lending standards aim to suppress excessive borrowing, they do little to address these underlying issues of rising living costs and predatory lending practices. The Bank of Canada, or BOC, rate hikes designed to curb these forces add pressure to those with variable rate loans and mortgages. Unsurprisingly, many Canadians use their credit cards to charge their expenses. For many with variable rate loans and mortgages, the Bank of Canada rate hikes have translated into higher borrowing costs, adding an additional burden to already stretched budgets. As monthly mortgage payments increase and disposable income dwindles, Canadians increasingly turn to credit cards as a stopgap to cover their day-to-day -day expenses. Yet what begins as a temporary solution soon morphs into a nightmarish cycle of debt as the high interest rates on credit card balances compound with each passing month. Unlike other forms of debt where interest rates may be comparatively lower, credit card interest rates in Canada are notoriously usurious, often hovering at double-digit percentages. This means that even a modest balance can quickly balloon into an unmanageable mountain of debt as compounding interest gnaws away at borrowers' financial well-being. As Canadians struggle to keep pace with escalating interest charges, their financial well-being is gradually eroded, leaving them trapped in a perpetual cycle of economic hardship. More people are increasingly feeling the financial squeeze, finding themselves saddled with debts potentially for the rest of their work career, with limited options to finance their debt, which technically sends them further and further down the rabbit hole. At the heart of this conundrum lies a paradox. Stagnant wages amidst an ever-rising cost of living. Canada's once vibrant economy has been hollowed out by decades of neoliberal policies and corporate greed. Rampant deregulation, private and tax cuts for the wealthy have siphoned wealth from the working class into the coffers of the elite, leaving ordinary Canadians struggling to make ends meet. 
As the cost of living continues its relentless ascent, many Canadians find themselves caught in a financial quagmire, struggling to bridge the ever-widening gap between their stagnant incomes and the soaring expenses of daily life. This stagnation, exacerbated by a multitude of economic factors, has become a potent catalyst for the alarming rise in credit card debt across the nation. As income equality reaches unprecedented levels, the promise of upward mobility becomes an elusive dream for millions of Canadians, further entrenching the divide between the affluent and the working class. The ramifications of stagnant wages ripple across every facet of Canadian society, undermining the financial stability of households and exacerbating income equality. The impact is particularly acute for low-wage workers and marginalized communities as they struggle to make ends meet in the face of rising living costs and dwindling purchasing power. Unable to afford basic necessities on their meager wages, many are automatically forced to turn to credit cards as a lifeline, accruing debt at alarming rates in a desperate bid to stave off financial ruin. According to a recent report, Canadians are presently living on more borrowed money than people of the other G7 countries, and the amount owed by the country's inhabitants is now more than the value of the entire economy. Amidst this towering burden of debt and the specter of financial instability, the ironic reality of welcome to Canada, get a loan, and the food bank is around the corner is becoming an all-too-chilling truth for many. Another shocking revelation is the exponential lack of financial literacy prevalent among Canadians, a trend that is particularly pronounced among immigrants. This deficiency in financial literacy has left millions of Canadians vulnerable to predatory lending practices, overspending and ultimately crippling debt. Many Canadians lack knowledge about the importance of building an emergency fund and saving for the future. Without a financial safety net in place, individuals may resort to using credit cards to cover unexpected expenses, such as car repairs or medical bills. This reliance on credit further exacerbates their debt burden and perpetuates a cycle of financial instability. Also, owing to the country's bilingualism, the complexity of financial products and services can be overwhelming for individuals with limited financial literacy, thereby spotlighting lighting newcomers as easy targets. Without the ability to understand loan terms, credit card agreements, and investment options, individuals have been known to fall victim to deceptive practices and hidden fees, unknowingly accumulating debt in their transactions. Unsurprisingly, in a recent report, Equifax highlights a trend of missed payments on all types of credit products across the country. The statistics reveal a notable uptick in the proportion of Canadians defaulting on payments with the frequency rising from 1 in 30 one individuals during the pandemic to one in 25 by the third quarter of 2023. This represents a substantial shift with over 139,000 additional consumers failing to meet payment obligations in Q3 compared to the previous year. It goes without saying that this rise in missed payments reflects broader systemic issues within the Canadian economy, including stagnant wage growth, rising living costs, and inadequate social safety nets. Many Canadians are not just stuck in a debt trap, they are concomitantly grappling with unstable employment, precarious housing situations, and limited access to affordable health care, exacerbating their financial vulnerability. The ordinance in the country is unquestionably a staggering failure. In the face of such dire circumstances, Canada's future no doubt looks bleak. Unless decisive actions are taken to address the root causes of this crisis, the once proud nation risks being consigned to the annals of history as yet another cautionary tale of economic collapse and societal decay. If you like this video, hit the like button to help spread the word, and remember to subscribe to get notifications on our latest news and analysis. In the meantime, check out one of these videos here to learn more. Thanks for watching.